Run. Run away. These words ring in her ears, a sharp contrast to the ghastly sight before her. Her heart yearns to rush towards her father's lifeless form. But she does as she's told. Fueled by panic, she bolts, sprinting into the unknown with nothing left to lose. Fast forward a week and the city is buzzing with the news of the tragic fire. It's all over the media, the headlines scream arson, painting a picture of a calculated act of violence. They talk about the victims, her parents, and the miraculous escape of their daughter, who managed to flee just in time. Her own version of the story, however, doesn't align with the media narrative. She speaks of shadowy figures and her parents' suspicious deaths. But the police dismiss her claims due to lack of concrete evidence, promising to look into it further. They assure her they're doing everything they can, even as they keep her under wraps, hidden from the public eye for her safety. Despite their promises, progress remains slow. Frustration gnaws at her as she awaits updates, only to be met with the same old line about the fire being intentional. In a fit of anger, she kicks away her crutches, instantly regretting the action as pain shoots up her leg. As she's struggling to retrieve them, an unfamiliar face approaches. He seems to know her well. Too well. She masks her surprise, hoping he would just go away. But he moves closer, commenting on how different she is from her father. His words pique her interest. She looks up, curiosity etching lines on her face. Does he know her family? He proceeds to confirm her suspicions, revealing a shared past and her father's association with the mafia. Her heart pounds as he shares the shocking truth, her father had been betrayed by his own colleagues, resulting in his untimely death. The revelation sparks a burning desire within her. She longs to find out more about the people responsible for her parents' deaths. But he urges her to let it go, assuring her that the organization will handle it. As he makes to leave, she calls after him, pleading to be included in the revenge plot. She falls to her knees, begging for his help in uncovering the truth. The police aren't sharing anything, and the pain of being left in the dark is too much for her to bear. She needs his help, and she's willing to do whatever it takes to get it. In the end, the man can't resist her earnest pleas. He leans in, sharing the name that will change her life forever, Nel Hyunchul, the big boss of Gummo, and Young Sung, her father's rival. Extending his hand towards her, he offers a pact. Take his hand, become one of Sarum's people, but cross them, and her life is forfeit. The name Nel Hyunchul echoes in her mind, fueling the fires of revenge in her heart. She looks at the extended hand, considering the offer. Meanwhile, news breaks that Yunha, our protagonist, has gone missing. Reports suggest she was last seen with an unidentified man, leaving many to speculate about her whereabouts. Taking the stranger's hand, she steps into a world she never knew existed, a whirlwind of cash, close connections, and, most importantly, opportunities for revenge. She becomes a master of the game, trading what she has for what she desires. Years pass as she maneuvers closer to her ultimate goal, even if it means selling her soul to the powerful men who can help her achieve it. Now, she finds herself sharing a bed with her target, not out of affection, but strategy. This man holds the key to her revenge, and she'll do whatever it takes to unlock it. She doesn't mind the cost, after all, her heart is set on avenging her parents. In the next scene, our leading lady crosses paths with the hunky business tycoon again. This time, the glitz and glamour of Hong Kong serve as their backdrop, and she's dressed to the nines, ready to turn heads. As they chat about work and globe-trotting adventures, his gaze appreciatively roams over her. He doles out compliments, which she takes in her stride. Their conversation flows effortlessly until their glasses run dry. The gentleman offers to refill hers, but she stops him with a flirty remark. As they head out, sparks fly in the backseat of the car as they make out. But Yunha breaks away, pretending to be tipsy and worried about tiring him out. Amidst their playful banter, a minor accident occurs on the busy highway, but it goes unnoticed. The tycoon brushes off her feigned concerns, reassuring her that he'll take care of her. Just as Yunha leans in, her phone buzzes, interrupting the moment. 
She excuses herself, lying that it's a call from her parents when it's actually her boss instructing her to abort the mission and catch a flight ASAP. After the call, she apologizes and tells him she has to RUSH home due to her father's sudden illness. But the man isn't pleased. He grabs her, refusing to let her go after she had led him on all evening. Yunha warns him to back off, but he doesn't listen. So, she reaches for her purse, smacking him square in the face, before using her high heel to knock him off balance. And she doesn't forget the driver either, giving him a taste of her purse too. The sudden halt allows Yunha to escape, though she lands roughly on the pavement. But there's no time to waste, she picks herself up and hails a taxi. As she slides into the cab, she throws a stack of cash at the driver, apologizing to a couple who were also eyeing the taxi. She teases the man for his less-than-gentlemanly behavior, before her ride zooms off into the night. Just seven hours after her highway escapade, Yunha finds herself back in South Korea, all business again. Right now, she's seated at a conference table, surrounded by her organization's bigwigs. The hot topic? Shin Kyung Hyun, a young go-getter pushing 40, who is currently the managing director of Gummo. His meteoric rise to power in just eight years has raised a few eyebrows, but that's none of their business. Yunha lounges in her chair, cigarette hanging lazily from her fingers, bored out of her mind as they rehash details she already knows. Finally, she cuts through the chatter, telling them bluntly she's had enough of their rambling. Young Pal, the group's informant, huffs at her impatience. But Yunha cuts him off too, saying she didn't pull an all-nighter to be bored to tears with stories that would make even toddlers yawn. Yonpul's temper flares, and he slams his hands on the table, rising to his feet in anger. But Yunha doesn't even blink. She grabs an ashtray and flings it at him, hitting him square in the face. Young Pal lunges at her, but Sungo Hyunnam steps in, his commanding presence stopping Young Pal in his tracks. Mumbling an apology, Young Pal retreats to a corner. Now it's Yunha and Sungo. He pulls out a knife and presses it to her neck, asking if she's refusing her assignment. Yunha denies it, but Sungo isn't convinced. She tries to play it cool, saying she was just trying to get a rise out of Young Pal, who couldn't keep his eyes off her. But Sungo blames her provocative outfit for Yonpul's wandering gaze. To emphasize his point, he slides the knife down her dress. Yunha stands there, letting him have his moment, before she reverts to her playful self. She teases Young Pal, who curses her out, only to have Sungo throw the knife at him. Young Pal wisely chooses that moment to make himself scarce. With Young Pal gone, Sungo leans in close, whispering Yunha's mission to her. Get close to Kyung Hyun over six months, then take him out. Yunha is taken aback by the timeline, but Sungo silences her with a look, leading her into his room for further discussions. In the half-lit room, Sungo sparks up a cigarette, drawing a deep breath of smoke before releasing it slowly from between his lips. Yunha's voice fills the air, her tone laced with frustration as she gripes about the complexity of her upcoming assignment. She questions Sungo, is taking out Shin Kyung Hyun really all there is to it? But Sungo cuts her short, explaining the bigger picture. Sungo reveals he's got his sights set on Yang Sung's latest venture abroad, a partnership with a pharmaceutical giant, with Shin Kyung Hyun slated as their Korean distributor. The company's stocks are predicted to skyrocket in three months, and that's precisely when Sungo plans to strike, bringing both the man and the company's fortunes crashing down. Yunha quickly grasps the plan, earning an approving nod from Sungo. He beams at her, calling her his little princess. A smirk tugs at the corners of Yunha's lips at the nickname. She uses the moment to question if this was all she had traveled for or if there was more behind the scenes. Caught off guard by her boldness, Sungo crushes out his cigarette on a nearby sofa, leaving the floor open for Yunha to make her move. Her eyes light up, she's finally getting what she wants, a shot at Shin Hyun Hyun. The next day, a striking man sweats it out on a tennis court. He glances at his stopwatch, satisfied with the 45-minute workout. As he cools down, Yunha materializes seemingly from nowhere, praising his skills while subtly implying he must have a lot of steam to blow off. 
Hyung Hyun isn't particularly impressed by her sudden appearance or her observations, but responds nonchalantly, admitting he's got a lot going on, though it's not all work-related. They chat casually for a bit, but the conversation soon takes a flirtier turn as he leans in closer. With Kyung Hyun now steering their conversation, Yunha finds herself momentarily lost for words. His confidence and charm have caught her off guard. Seeing that she's at a loss, he coolly picks up his bag and starts to walk away, leaving Yunha to process their exchange. On impulse, she calls out to him and offers herself yes in that way. Now it's his turn to be taken aback. He quickly dismisses her, claiming he prefers sophisticated women over children. Unfazed, Yunha pushes through the verbal volley until she sees him crack a grin. That's when she knows she's got him intrigued. When he asks for her name, she introduces herself as Lee Hayan and asks for his, but he remains mysterious. Their banter continues, each one teasing about their anticipated escapades. They part on a light note, each heading their separate ways. The next day, Kyung Hyun is back in business mode, rushing through the office elevator with his assistant, talking in the authoritative tone reserved for men of power. His assistant gives him a heads up about a new secretary filling in for someone on maternity leave. He doesn't pay much mind to it until he spots the child from the tennis court at the front desk, Yunha. Once they're alone in his office, Kyung Hyun scrutinizes Yunha, asking how long she had planned their coincidental meeting at the tennis court. She denies any ulterior motives, but he isn't buying it. In his experience, women have often used such tactics to get close to him. Yunha pleads her case, insisting she needs the job and promises to put in her best effort if he could forgive her earlier rudeness. He tells her to look up, giving her a full look before diving into her resume. There is not much to see here until he scrolls down and the next information gets his attention, an accident that occurred 10 years ago, that he then comments that she might be overqualified for the job. Yunha is surprised, but manages to keep her composure, answering his barrage of questions. That is until he changes the tone, making a pointed remark about her flashy appearance being inappropriate for a secretary. It takes her back to their first encounter when he mentioned his preference for flashy women. Now, standing too close for comfort, he clarifies that he prefers his women flashy in bed, not at work, as they are a distraction. Yunha struggles to keep her focus with him so close. Stammering a promise to tone it down next time, she leaves the door open for whatever Kyung Hyun might have in mind next. Still at their office late into the evening, Kyung Hyun leans across to Yunha, letting her know she's landed the job. He hands over all the high-tech tools of the trade, showing her the ropes, while expressing his surprise that the organization chose someone as headstrong as her. Yunha can't help but respond with a grin, her excitement about her new mission practically sparkling in her eyes. After the orientation, Kyung Hyun shifts gears from business to pleasure, taking a walk down memory lane to their last encounter. He recalls her question about his intense workout and her reaction to his answer. His voice drops lower, confessing his pent-up desires, before making a bold proposition, he wants her in his bed. As he puffs on a cigarette, he lays out the terms of their arrangement. She'd be under constant surveillance, restricted to a specific area and wouldn't be allowed outside without his permission. The list goes on, growing more intimidating, with each puff of smoke. Yunha feels a chill sweep through her. She knows she has to tread carefully or risk losing her position and jeopardizing the entire mission. She's heard of women falling into traps like these, and she has no intention of joining their ranks. She responds firmly, stating that she's here strictly for work and will do her best not to be a burden. Her answer seems to satisfy Kyung Hyun. He casually assigns her a new task, investigate a certain major Kim min -seek, who he suspects is cheating the company out of profits and might abscond with the company's gains. Yunha quickly formulates a plan to gain Kyung Hyun's trust. She promises to dig up all the dirt on the major before their scheduled meeting in two days. Kyung Hyun sinks back in his chair, warning her that it will be a challenging, if not impossible, task. But Yunha is resolute, determined to expose the major's deceit. Seeing her determination, Kyung Hyun decides to give her a chance. Suddenly, there's a knock on the door, 
and in Russia's Chief Cha, Kyung Hyun's assistant, looking as though he's seen a phantom. Before he can say a word, Kyung Hyun dismisses Yunha, indicating that it's a private matter. As she exits the room, she struggles to keep her mind off Kyung Hyun and the risky game she's playing. As she steps out of the office, she catches a snippet of their conversation, something about the president of Gummo arriving soon. Fear or shock, she isn't sure which hits her first. One thing's certain though, her mission just got a whole lot more complicated. But she's ready for the challenge. In the next chapter, we find a young girl basking in the warmth of a sunny garden, her mother's loving presence a comforting constant. Their laughter fills the air, creating a picture of pure, unadulterated joy. Abruptly, the scene takes a grim turn. Yunha bolts upright in bed, drenched in cold sweat, another nightmare. She pads quietly to the kitchen for a glass of water, hoping to soothe her racing heart. When will these tormenting dreams cease? They're becoming too real, too vivid. Yunha steps out onto the balcony, lighting a cigarette as she immerses herself in memories both bitter and sweet. She recalls her younger self, tending to the garden with her mother, then the horrifying day of the accident when she hid, helplessly screaming in silence from within the closet. It was ten years ago, a time when she was just a teenager, resenting her parents for their overprotectiveness. She'd wished then for the freedom of an orphan's life, little realizing how soon her wish would come true. Now, she's on a personal mission of revenge. Even if Shin Kyung Hyun, her current target, isn't directly linked to her father's demise, his association with Young Sung is reason enough for her to bring him down. But first, she needs to win his trust, not by offering herself, but through her skills and cunning. The following day is D-Day for Yunha, a chance to prove her worth to her new boss, Shin Kyung Hyun. The meeting room buzzes with anticipation as Director Shin and Mayor Kim min -seek discuss their potential alliance. Kyung Hyun proposes a deal that the mayor can't refuse, or so he thinks. He asks Kim min -seek to transfer all his related businesses to Gummo Company and lend his support. The mayor, taken aback, wonders if this is some sort of joke. Support Gummo in their illicit operations? Shin, anticipating the mayor's reaction, plays his trump card, he involves the mayor's family, specifically his sons. Earlier that day, Yunha had handed Shin a document containing all the evidence needed to corner the mayor. The file revealed Kim min wife's decade-long travels to the Netherlands for cannabis treatments for their epileptic youngest son. Shin admits that although the information is damning, they need more concrete evidence. Yunha doesn't disappoint. She produces another file, this one containing a clear image of Kim min elder son trembling in a corner after pilfering cannabis from his younger brother. Impressed, Shin asks Yunha how she gathered such detailed information. With a casual shrug, she replies that she went there herself to uncover it all. Now, back in the meeting room, Director Shen lays out all the incriminating details before the mayor, watching the man turn ashen with fear. As the mayor stammers a defense, Kyung Hyun cuts him off, offering him a drink instead. Later, as he reflects on the successful meeting, Kyung Hyun appreciates Yunha's invaluable contribution. Without her, he doubts if he could have made a dent in Mayor Kim min stubborn demeanor. Yet, he can't shake off a nagging suspicion about keeping Yunha close. He ponders if he's making the right choice. That night, Kyung Hyun plays the gentleman card and gives Yunha a lift home. She thanks him as she heads inside her apartment while he lingers in his car, watching her disappear before heading off. As Yunha steps into her place, she's greeted by an unwelcome sight, Yong Pal, sprawled across her bed like he owns the place. She snaps at him, asking what on earth he thinks he's doing in her apartment. The nerve of this guy. She tells him to hit the road, but he's not keen on leaving, instead questioning why she switched off the bug that was planted on her. Yunha rummages through her bag, pulls out the tiny device, and tosses it aside like yesterday's news. She explains it's safer if Kyung Hyun doesn't find her with it. Young Pal tries to voice his concerns, but Yunha isn't having any of it. She firmly tells him his being there is risky enough and that if he said his piece, then he should skedaddle. Just as she's about to freshen up, her phone rings, it's Sungo. She plops onto the bed, bracing herself for a long chat.
She fills him in on the lowdown about her two-hour powwow with Kim Min-seek and how her intel had been crucial to Kyung Hyun. When Sung-go asks about the purpose of the meeting, she explains that only the big guns, Director Shin and Chief Cha, are privy to such juicy details, not a mere secretary like her. She rambles on about bits and pieces of information she's collected until she drops the bombshell, Kyung Hyun's departure date. It's in six weeks, and he's only taking his inner circle along. Sungo seems satisfied with the info she's provided, but before he hangs up, he asks if she's slept with Kyung Hyun yet. She denies it, leaving Sungo puzzled. After a quick warning about the risks of dealing with Kyung Hyun, he ends the call. After the day she's had, Yunha is feeling the stress big time. She glances at Yong Pal, still lounging on her bed. What are you still doing here? she asks. Without waiting for his response, she starts shedding her clothes right in front of him. His eyes practically pop out of his head, but he doesn't complain. What are you up to? he asks, clearly intrigued, but Yunha just smirks. Not long after, Young Pal gets a rude awakening about what Yun has got in store for him. The guy is freaking out as he tries to fend her off, she's threatening to bite off his stuff. Did he really think he had a shot? As soon as he gets a whiff of her intentions, he bolts out of her place faster than a cat on a hot tin roof. Finally, she can breathe easy and freshen up. Yunha hops into the shower, and once she's done, she goes through her usual routine of checking her phone. Seeing two missed calls from Shin Kyung Hyun, her heart does a little flip. She dials his number, her mind filled with images of his deep, dark eyes. She snaps out of her reverie when he answers the call. She almost lets her real name slip, but quickly corrects herself before he notices. It's a first for her, and it's surprising. Is she actually getting nervous around him now? As their conversation goes on, Shin gives her occasional pauses that leave her speechless, and Yunha can't help but feel a little special. She asks him if he usually treats his other secretaries the same way, and he replies with a no. He says that although he usually checks up on everyone who works for him, this is the first time he has made a call by himself. Usually, he'd delegate that task to someone else. Before they hang up, Shin apologizes for ever underestimating her skills, and she graciously accepts his apology. After the call ends, Yunha heads to bed, unaware that Shin is outside her apartment, watching her. Meanwhile, back at his own place, Kyung Hyun finds a way to unwind, with thoughts of Yunha filling his mind. Once he's done, he starts to reflect on how his life has unfolded. A week ago, he was tipped off about a tale on him, but he didn't think much of it as it's part and parcel of his lifestyle. However, when he bumped into Lee Hayen at the tennis court and then saw her again in his office, her presence started to feel a tad suspicious. It was too much of a coincidence. And when he read about her parents' accident in her file, the penny dropped. Lee Yunha, the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Lee. He was under the impression she was dead, given Sungo had informed him so. As he pieces together the puzzle, he receives a call from Sickleson Corporation and finds himself on the line with none other than Sungo. Sungo knows all about Shin Kyung Hyun and has been working with him all along. After Mr. Lee's death, Sungo took over the reins of Serum Company. But his greed and ambition knew no bounds and he set his sights on Young Sung Company too. So he sent Kyung Hyun undercover to win No Hyung Chul's trust and funnel all profits back to Serum, a mission that takes eight long years to complete. That was his initial assignment. The final task, however, is personal. Once Kyung Hyun wraps it up, he can return to Serum. This raises eyebrows because, in all these years, Sungo has never pressed him to return to the company. Now you're probably wondering what this last mission is. Well, let me fill you in. After Sungo sent Kyung Hyun to spy on Yong Sung, he hired other spies to keep tabs on Kyung Hyun, ensuring they didn't live to tell the tale once their mission was done. And guess who's next in line? None other than Lee Yunha. As the night gives way to morning, Kyung Hyun bursts out of the elevator in deep conversation with Chief Cha so engrossed that he breezes past Yunha as if she's part of the office furniture. Ouch. That stings. Yunha's heart aches a little at this unexpected snub. Within the sanctuary of his office, Kyung Hyun and Cha dive into the day's agenda, scheduled meetings, 
checking up on Yunha's passport details, and waiting for Kim Min-sik's reaction to their little blackmail scheme. It all seems to be falling into place perfectly, so Kyung Hyun cuts Cha loose before he starts to ramble off topic. Rewinding to last night, Kyung Hyun had another call after Sungos. He shares his security concerns with the person on the other end of the line. Something's not quite right, but he brushes it off until he has concrete proof. Ever since his rise to power, he's been a thorn in Sungo's side, and now Sungo has set the stunning Yunha on him. But Kyung Hyun knows Yunha is smart enough to realize that he's too formidable to take down. Plus, he's got a hunch that she's not too fond of the old man either, despite her seductive charade. He's got her figured out, her mission and all, except for why she's yet to make her move. Kyung Hyun summons Yunha to his office to update her on some new arrangements, she'll be joining him on some of his international trips. Yunha listens attentively, nodding at all the right places. When he's done, he asks her if there's anything she'd like to add. She flashes a nervous smile and tells him she's happy he's feeling better and assures him she won't meddle with his work. And just like that, she's out of sight. As the day winds down, Kyung Hyun offers to give Yunha a lift home. As they're about to leave, they share a brief, intimate moment when she stumbles and he catches her. But unlike in the movies, he doesn't let the moment linger. He steadies her and then strides off, leaving her once again mystified by his actions. The drive home is eerily quiet, punctuated only by the soft patter of rain. This gives Yunha some space to think about her next moves, now that she'll be traveling with Shin Kyung Hyun to Shenzhen. She could gather intel to help Sungo's drug business make a more competitive offer than Young Sung, or she could try to swipe some drug samples, but that's riskier. As her worries start to etch themselves onto her face, Kyung Hyun glances over and asks if she's okay. He even reaches over to touch her forehead, half-jokingly complaining that people might think he's making his employees work while they're famished. Yunha assures him she'll take care of it if it bothers him so much. He shrugs it off, saying it was just a joke. Seeing this lighter side of him makes Yunha smile, he suddenly seems so, normal. And it seems to flip a switch in Kyung Hyun, because he then invites her out for dinner. It's pouring outside, so Kyung Hyun fetches an umbrella and holds it out to Yunha. But she's so taken aback by all that's happening that she can't quite wrap her head around the idea of sharing an umbrella with him. So, she makes a rather silly decision to walk in the rain instead. Kyung Hyun glances back to see her grinning sheepishly at him. With a shake of his head and a chuckle, he reels her in under the umbrella. And just like that, Yunha forgets how to breathe. Inside the restaurant, Yunha tries to dry her damp dress, joking about how she still managed to get wet despite sharing an umbrella with Kyung Hyun. She instantly regrets her words as Kyung Hyun seizes the opportunity to give her a little lecture on behaving professionally when they're together, so as not to give people the wrong impression. He doesn't want people to think she is being kidnapped or held at gunpoint. Yunha just laughs it off, teasing him that he doesn't look like someone who has any experience in kidnapping. Kyung Hyun pours himself a drink and starts talking about various shady organizations involved in human trafficking, dropping Saram's name into the mix. Yunha is momentarily taken aback by this revelation, but manages to play it cool, steering the conversation towards other organizations that use a hierarchy system similar to gangsters. Kyung Hyun admits there are such organizations and leaves her hanging as he mulls over his response. Yunha anxiously anticipates him mentioning a group they both know, but to her relief, he only refers to the police. With a relieved laugh, she quips that she'd pick the gangsters over the police any day, given their incompetence. As their meal arrives, Yunha takes a moment to survey her surroundings. They're in a secluded room within a restaurant, nestled deep in the mountains, an ideal place to hide a body, she muses, especially hers. Unlike usual, Kyung Hyun seems unusually relaxed today. He casually asks her why she joined Gummo, to which she gives her standard reply about wanting to achieve a goal. The conversation then drifts back to the first day they met. Kyung Hyun mentions how young she was then and that he still remembers her age because she kept repeating it. He also shares that around her age, he had already taken lives. 
Yunha looks at him in shock as he casually talks about the downsides of having so many lives on his conscience and whether he ever worries about facing retribution for his actions. Flashing a mischievous grin, Kyung Hyun tells her if that were true, he wouldn't be able to keep doing what he does. He adds, almost proudly, that he's quite a shameless character. When she questions why he's being so open with her, he blames it on the booze. Intrigued, Yunha decides she wants to try some of the alcohol too and asks Kyung Hyun to pour her a glass. She takes a sip, but the fiery liquid is too much for her and she ends up coughing it all out. She's amazed that Kyung Hyun has been downing this stuff like it's water ever since they got here. How does he do it? After their meal, Yunha thanks Kyung Hyun for the treat. As they're about to go their separate ways, he suggests they take a little walk. She agrees, and during their stroll, Kyung Hyun keeps probing her about her time in Korea and how she ended up working at Gummo. He comments that she seems overqualified for her position. As they wander into a more secluded area, Kyung Hyun makes a subtle move, just a light touch on her shoulder, but it's enough to make Yunha nervous. Noticing her reaction, he challenges her to speak her mind. Without missing a beat, she tells him exactly what she's thinking, she wants to kiss him. Caught off guard by her boldness, Kyung Hyun is far from upset. He pulls her in closer, by the waist. She murmurs something, and that's all it takes for him to make his move. He threads his fingers through her silky hair, gripping it tightly, but just as he's about to seal the deal, he's distracted by a sudden beam of light in the distance. Squinting, they can make out the silhouette of a man on a sports bike, barreling toward them at top speed. Without missing a beat, Kyung Hyun whips out a gun from his pocket and takes aim at the biker, then fires. His bullet hits its mark, causing the rider to lose control and topple over, landing face first on the ground. His helmet cracks open, revealing his identity, it's Young Pal. Yunha is so startled, she forgets for a moment that Kyung Hyun is armed. But he doesn't hesitate to fire again, this time hitting Young Pal in the arm as he scrambles to safety. Kyung Hyun immediately orders Chief Cha to take Yunha away from the scene so he can handle the intruder, but Yunha clings to him, pleading with him not to leave her alone. Kyung Hyun is determined to finish what he started, but Yunha's pleas soften him, so he picks her up and carries her away from the chaos. After such an eventful night, Yunha is relieved to be home. She thanks Kyung Hyun for dropping her off and he asks why she stopped him from shooting the biker. She admits she's never witnessed an execution before and acted instinctively to prevent him from doing something drastic. However, she's grateful that he protected her and feels safe when he's around. He seems to take her words to heart and wanting to prove himself, he checks her leg for injuries from the earlier fall. Yunha is slightly overwhelmed by all this direct contact with him, but she can't complain when he pulls out a handkerchief to clean her up. It's a new side of him, one that's unexpectedly kind, but Yunha certainly isn't complaining. The moment they reach her doorstep, Yunha offers a sincere thank you to Kyung Hyun before disappearing into the comfort of her home. Once inside, she realizes she's got the place all to herself. So, without wasting any time, she starts to peel off her dress. As she does this, her mind wanders back to the evening's events, particularly Yonpul's unsettling pursuit on his motorbike. She decides it's time to loop in Sungo about the situation, but wants to ensure their conversation remains private. So, clad in her underwear, she tiptoes towards the door to make sure the coast is clear. As she cracks open the door, the first thing that catches her eye is a pair of shoes. Before she can even process what's happening, a figure steps out from the shadows and into her living room. To her utter surprise, she finds herself face to face with none other than Kyung Hyun. Yunha is utterly perplexed. How on earth did he get the passcode to her apartment? A whirlwind of questions swirls in her mind, but before she can voice any of them Kyung Hyun silences her with a kiss. Her eyes go wide and her heart races, but she finds herself kissing him back. Encouraged, Kyung Hyun scoops her up and carries her to the bedroom. Their simmering romance seems to have hit a sudden boiling point. The intensity of their connection causes Yunha to reflect on her mission. She knows this intimacy is part of the plan, but why does it feel so real? Later, Kyung Hyun pulls a slightly sore Yunha to his side and holds her close. 
They chat about the experience they just shared, with Yunha talking a mile a minute, an adorable habit she falls into whenever she's nervous. And Kyung Hyun, well, he has a way of making her jittery. They share light-hearted banter and laughter, much like any couple would until Kyung Hyun tells her to get some sleep. As Yunha starts to develop genuine feelings for him, she can't help but worry that her mission might be heading off course. A few days have passed, but the events from that fateful night still play on repeat in Yunha's mind. It wasn't so much about the passionate encounter with Kyung Hyun that was bothering her, but rather the unexpected appearance of Young Pal. In a fit of frustration, she dials him up, giving him a piece of her mind for crashing her date with Kyung Hyun on a motorbike. But Young Pal is not in the mood for a melodrama. He shrugs off her accusations, claiming he was merely adding a dash of excitement to ensure their evening wrapped up on a high note, all under Sungo's directives. Yunha is taken aback. The nerve of that old coot. Why on earth would he command an ambush on her without giving her a heads up? She wonders what could possibly be brewing in his mind to pull such a stunt. Young Pal elaborates further, explaining that Sungo simply wanted to give Kyung Hyun a bit of a scare. But what did he get in return? A bullet wound, albeit not too severe, it still stung. Yunha quickly wraps up the call, informing Young Pal that she'll be attending the Gummo Foundation anniversary party with Shin Kyung Hyun. However, she admits she's clueless about the details since she only found out today. When Young Pal offers backup, she declines, feeling confident that she has managed to earn a degree of Kyung Hyun's trust. Post call, she removes the chip from her phone, tossing it away while en route to the office, keen on avoiding any suspicious items around Shin. Let's rewind to the aftermath of their encounter two nights ago. They both drift off to sleep, but Yunha is the first to stir awake. She scans the room until her eyes land on Kyung Hyun's cell phone. She's just about to grab it and copy all his data when Kyung Hyun wakes up and questions her. She quickly covers up, saying she's going for a shower. At three in the morning? So he scoops her up from the floor and escorts her to the bathroom where they resume where they left off. Fast forward to the present, Yunha finds herself still consumed by thoughts of Shin Kyung Hyun as she walks to her desk. She sneaks a peek into his office to see if he's arrived yet, and is rewarded with the sight of his impressive physique impeccably dressed in a sharp suit. Wow, indeed. With only a few hours to spare before the Gummo Foundation's grand anniversary party, Kyung Hyun and Yunha find themselves in a high-end boutique. As Kyung Hyun casually flips through a fashion magazine, Yunha can't help but question their reason for being there. His answer is simple and straightforward, they're there to shop. Yunha assures him that his current blue suit would fit in perfectly at any party. But Kyung Hyun quickly clears up her misunderstanding. They're not shopping for him, they're shopping for her. The news sends a jolt of excitement through Yunha. It's been ages since she had the luxury of shopping without sparing a thought for the price tags. Kyung Hyun, amused by her delight, encourages her to pick anything she fancies. In no time, Yunha is sifting through racks of exquisite dresses, each more glamorous than the last. As she browses, her mind drifts back to the incident with Kyung Hyun's phone. She silently vows not to repeat such a risky move lest she gets caught. Upon selecting a promising outfit, she tries it on and presents herself to Kyung Hyun. He's visibly impressed, complimenting her on the beautiful choice. In response, she gives a playful twirl before dropping the gold robe to the floor, revealing another stunning dress beneath. This one earns her an enthusiastic applause from Kyung Hyun. With a blush creeping up her cheeks, she scurries off to find the perfect pair of shoes to match her ensemble. This isn't just about looking good, it's about perfection. She needs everything to be flawless, because the stakes are high. For a decade, she's been waiting for an opportunity like this, and now it's finally within her grasp. The Gummo Foundation anniversary party isn't just a social event, it's her golden ticket to meeting the man at the helm of Yuxung, No Hyunchul. Once Yun has found the perfect dress for the night, she joins Kyung Hyun at the checkout counter. He's ready to foot the bill, but not before adding a few more items to their haul. First, he selects a glittering handbag and when she opens it, she discovers an extravagant necklace nestled inside. The sheer amount spent on her within just a few hours leaves her reeling. 
She can't help but wonder if this splurge has anything to do with their intimate encounter two nights ago. Shaking off the thought, she decides to focus on the present. Hyung Hyun guides her towards a mirror, allowing her to appreciate the beauty of the necklace as he fastens it around her neck. Yunha is in awe, hardly able to believe that the stunning piece now belongs to her. Hyung Hyun reassures her, confirming that it's indeed hers. Despite her delight over the jewelry, Yunha feels somewhat dissatisfied with her makeup. It just doesn't seem to be party ready. But Kyung Hyun seems utterly captivated by her appearance, so perhaps it's not as bad as she thinks. Flustered under his intense gaze, she reminds him of his promise to treat her with respect when she agreed to work with him again. Kyung Hyun simply chuckles at this, signaling Chief Cha to pull up his car. For security reasons, they'll be leaving separately. He's always got a tail of people following him after all. They engage in some light-hearted banter before parting ways. Yuna's adorable look has Kyung Hyun so smitten that he confesses he wants to kiss her. Her heart skips a beat at his words, but she gives him the green light. Caught up in the moment once again, Kyung Hyun sweeps her off to one of the boutique's plush sofas. In the heat of the moment, Kyung Hyun makes it clear that he doesn't want to share her with anyone else. From now on, she will be exclusively his. Yunha finds herself at a crossroads, torn between her mission and the unexpected feelings she's developed for Kyung Hyun. After their encounter, Yunha and Kyung Hyun manage to keep things pretty chill. Yunha quickly dresses up again, contemplating a quick outfit change. But Kyung Hyun insists she sticks with her current dress, stating that it's become a part of their shared memory, it'd be odd to ditch it now. As they step out of the boutique, Yunha teases him about his resemblance to Ma Chao, an ancient Chinese general. The joke has them both chuckling, and Kyung Hyun realizes he's starting to like this version of Yunha, not the undercover spy playing his secretary, but the real, unfiltered Yunha from a decade ago. The Gumo Foundation anniversary party is in full swing when they arrive. Yunha positions herself strategically, nursing a glass of red wine while keeping an eye out for No Hyunchul. Kyung Hyun, sans suit, is also hanging around the periphery. He'd given his jacket to Yunha earlier to ward off the evening chill. He saunters over to Yunha to check in on her. She assures him she's doing fine. But as a high-profile figure, Kyung Hyun can't avoid being pulled away by another VIP for some business chatter. Left alone again, Yunha takes this opportunity to excuse herself and scout for information. In another room, she stumbles upon a group of men discussing the recent power shift at Shin's. Their resentment towards Shin's rise to the top is palpable. They reveal that Shin's stellar performance led No Hyunchul to sideline director Lim and promote Shin instead. The gossipy chatter also reveals that No Hyunchul won't be attending the party, his brother will be representing him instead. This changes everything. If No Hyunchul isn't showing up, then Sarum's arrival is pointless. With this new information, Yunha hurries back to find Kyung Hyun, hoping to regroup and revise their plan. Now in their own little bubble, Yunha admits to Kyung Hyun that the party isn't quite what she expected. She'd hoped for more networking with industry bigwigs and chances to showcase her secretarial skills. Kyung Hyun, however, encourages her to just relax, enjoy her wine, and have some fun. Yunha subtly broaches the subject of the president's absence to which Kyung Hyun candidly responds. Turns out, No Hyunchul typically shies away from public events due to a past attack by gang members, one of whom was his nephew. He also shares the dramatic story of how Shin Kyungbian rose to power, having taken a knife for No Hyunchul during the attack. This gets Yunha wondering if it would take a similar life-threatening situation for Kyung Hyun to truly trust her. Their chat is cut short by the arrival of Director Cha who whispers something about Shin Jin to Kyung Hyun. Whatever it is, it seems urgent, as Kyung Hyun grabs his jacket and makes a swift exit. Yunha attempts to follow, after all, she's his secretary, but he instructs her to stay put. From her vantage point, she can tell that Shin Jin has something to do with drug development. Spotting a potential goldmine of information, she decides to arrange a private meeting with Kyung Hyun to gain access to this data. Once Kyung Hyun wraps up with Director Cha, he calls Yunha over to help straighten his tie. It's an important event, and he can't afford to look disheveled. 
Yunhe hesitates, always a little unnerved by his proximity. Finally, standing close enough to touch, she fumbles with the stubborn tie, her nerves getting the best of her. Noticing her struggle, Hyun Hyun lands a soft kiss on her cheek to ease her tension. And it works, calming her nerves and allowing her to get the job done. Alone with her thoughts, Yuna's mind races to plot her next move. She knows her mission, gather intel on Shenzhen. But how to go about it, especially with time ticking away fast. Mulling it over, she decides that a bit of stealthy exploration might just do the trick. As if on cue, a waiter glides by with a food trolley, and she discreetly tails him. Meanwhile, Hyung Hyun ascends a flight of stairs, flanked by Chief Cha and under watchful cameras, heading for a private business discussion. His face is etched with deep concentration, revealing the gravity of the situation. When Cha comments on his intense focus, Hyung Hyun dismisses it with a wave. Yun Ha peeks out from her hiding spot, scanning the hall, before stepping out. The heavy security presence catches her attention, this isn't your average anniversary party. She's sure something significant is happening here. Having lost sight of the waiter she was trailing, she waits for him to reappear. When he does, she notes that his trolley is empty, suggesting he's been serving several people. Assured she's alone, she slips off her shoes and starts to follow him, hoping to confirm No Hyunchil's absence and extract information about Shen Zhen from Shin Kyung Hyun. Heart pounding, Yun had tiptoes down the corridor towards a door marked security. She presses her ear against it, straining to catch the conversation inside. She immediately recognizes Shin Kyung Hyun's voice and listens intently. Then another voice chimes in, which sends her reeling in shock. It's none other than Gumo's president, No Hyunchul. Kneeling to stay hidden, Yun Ha listens to their conversation, grinning at how easily she's gathering crucial intel. The discussion reveals a trafficking operation, they're planning to export goods from Shenzhen, route them through Hong Kong, and bring them back to Yongsung. The primary cargo? Methamphetamine. They need Kim min corporation to smoothen the transportation process and eliminate any roadblocks. Suddenly, the room falls silent, broken only by No Hyungchul's demanding voice. He's telling Shin Kyung Hyun that he can't see the girl he came with on the cameras. A cold realization washes over Yunha, she's the girl he's talking about. Heart pounding like a drum, she springs to her feet and bolts, praying she hasn't been spotted. Yunha makes a break for it, but the office door swings open, and a man stumbles out, hollering for her to halt. He manages to nab her, hauling her back into the lion's den while she wriggles and squirms, trying to evade his vice-like grip. Now, she's stuck in a room with two intimidating figures, spinning a shaky tale about a detour to the rooftop gone wrong. Hyung Hyun, amused by the spectacle unfolding from his vantage point, rises and strides over, instructing the guard to release Yunha. The guard hesitates, but ultimately complies, issuing a quick apology before exiting. As Kyung Hyun probes Yunha about her antics, she studies him, trying to concoct another believable fib. Before she can settle on one, a voice chimes in, questioning why she stormed into his office, like a pack of panicked rodents. The voice belongs to No Hyungchul. Yuna's original plan was straightforward, gather intel on Yong Sung, escort Shin Kyung Hyun to Shin Jen for their trade, then topple everything, not for Serum or Yong Sung, but because it all brought her nothing but agony. But now, with No Hyungchul in her sights, her patience starts to wear thin. Why jump through hoops when her target is right there? Her blood boils, and blind with fury, she lunges at him, only to be intercepted by the same man who dragged her back. With a swift elbow jab, she sends him flying, swipes his gun, and trains it on No Hyungchul. But No Hyungchul just smirks, teasing her about her new toy. Each wisecrack only stokes Yuna's fire. She starts to close in on him, but slams on the brakes when Shin Kyung Hyun issues a stern warning, brandishing his own piece. A guard follows suit, leveling his weapon at her. Two against one? To Yunha, that sounds like a party. Life or death doesn't faze her. With tears in her eyes, she steals one last glance at Kyung Hyun before taking aim at No Hyunchul and pulling the trigger. And just like that, the office turns into a shooting gallery. Hyung Hyun's voice rings out as Yunha crumples to the floor. 
In the blink of an eye, her mind whisks her back to that fateful night that had turned her world upside down. The night had been drenched in rain and she was on a call with her bestie, Amy, buzzing about how to get her parents to give her the green light for camp especially since her crush was going too. They were both giddy with excitement and Yunha assured Amy that she'd be there, no matter what. Hanging up, she headed inside her home, only to find the front door eerily ajar. A wave of confusion washed over her, but she shrugged it off, deciding to check on her mom in the laundry room. But as soon as she stepped inside, she was met with the chaos of men bolting down the stairs. Without thinking, she ducked into a nearby closet, clamping a hand over her mouth to stifle any sound. She sat there, in the dark, heart pounding like a drum as she listened to the men scouring the house. There was a pack of them, led by one distinct voice. They split up, combing through every room and bathroom, and even the second floor. Once the coast was clear, she stepped out of her hiding spot, only to be met with the gruesome sight of her father's lifeless body. She barely had time to process the horror before she was running upstairs, where more voices echoed. Her heart sank further at the sight of her mother, sprawled in a pool of blood. She stifled a sob, watching from a distance, before darting back into hiding as the men returned. The man in the black suit started around arrogantly, clearly the ring leader. Satisfied with his sweep, he was about to leave when a sound from Yuna's phone caught his attention. She fumbled to silence it, but it was too late, he was already heading her way. She watched him through a crack in the door, praying he wouldn't find her. But then, Mrs. Lee, in a final act of motherly love, held him back. He simply laughed at her weak attempt, drew a knife, and ended her life, promising to reunite mother and daughter soon. And that was when it hit Yunha, this monster was none other than Sungo Hyunnim, Saram's new head honcho. With adrenaline pumping and her heart pounding like a drum, Yunha bolted. She raced out the door, onto the main street, desperate for help, for safety, for anything. As she rounded a corner, she collided with a figure. Relief washed over her as she fell, a sobbing mess, and blacked out. Shin Kyung Hyun looked down at her with sympathy before whisking her away to safety. Shin Kyung Hyun wraps a protective arm around her, his gaze locked on the blazing inferno Sungo and his gang had kick-started. It was a sight that would be etched in his memory forever. Jump to a few years later, Yunha walks into his firm, throwing her hat in the ring for a secretary gig. Shin Kyung Hyun fires up a smoke, trying to cool his racing nerves. He's in a huddle with Chief Cha, Yunha, being the talk of the town. Cha drops a bombshell, they've hit a brick wall, trying to trace anything about Yunha from the last decade. Shin Kyung Hyun figures it's got to be Sungo's sneaky hide and seek game at play. Cha's not quite sold on this theory, but Shin Kyung Hyun lays it down for him. A teen girl went MIA 10 years back vanished without a trace. Someone's been playing guardian angel, and who better than Serum's top dog, Sungo? Cha reluctantly nods, and they whip up a plan to bug her hotel room, hoping to get the lowdown on her. That's when the pieces start to fall into place. Now, Shin Kyung Hyun's alone in his office, replaying the last scene with Yunha over and over. He stumped as to why she took a shot at No Hyunchul instead of him. Was taking out No Hyunchul part of her secret mission? With a bit of doubt creeping in, he dials up Sungo Hyungnim. They exchange some niceties before Shin Kyung Hyun cuts to the chase, spilling the beans about the face-off between Yunha and No Hyunchul. Sungo Hyunnim plays the shocked card at first, then spins a tail, suggesting Yunha might be rolling with a different crew, or maybe there's a power struggle within Young Sung. Shin Kyung Hyun shoots that down instantly. After a bit of dodging and weaving to distance himself from Yunha, Sungo asks if she's still kicking, and if so, Shin Hyun Hyun should hand her over. There's a pause before Shin Kyung Hyun drops his bombshell, he knows Sungo sent Yunha to Young Sung to snoop around and get the inside scoop on the Shin Gen deal. A tad ruffled, Sungo Hyunnim admits his game was up. He'd planned to come clean about these new developments. He also mentions that offing no Hyunchul wasn't part of the plan. But Shin Kyung Hyun isn't buying any of it. He tells the older man that Yunha is now his problem, and he'll do as he pleases with the info. With that, he hangs up. Back in his office, he can't help but wonder what drove Yunha to pull the trigger. 
If Sung Bo Hyung Nam wasn't pulling the strings, who was? It's time to dig deep. Just then, Chief Cha bursts into his office, insisting he check out something big. In the hushed tranquility of the hospital, Yoon Ha lies still. A fiery redhead fills Shin Kyung Hyun in on her situation, she's clammed up, not uttering a word to anyone, even though her gunshot wound is just a shoulder graze. Shin Kyung Hyun sidles up closer and drops her real name, casually into the conversation. He lets her know he's clued into her true identity, having eavesdropped on her exchanges with Sung Bo Hyun Nim. He also spills the beans on the number of other guys sent on the same wild goose chase as her. The penny finally drops for Yunha, she's been playing games, while Shin Kyung Hyun was on to her all along. Visibly shaken, she tries to bolt upright, but the redhead quickly intervenes, pleading with her to stay put. Yunha isn't having it. She demands to know who the redhead is, and the answer throws her for a loop. The police? And not just any cop, but a special task force officer assigned to the Yong Sung and Serum case. Yunha's mind reels, so Shin Kyung Hyun steps in to break it down. He confesses he's a cop, who infiltrated the gang, to expose their illicit activities, and dish out some justice. The officer jumps in, filling Yunha in on the nitty-gritty details she likely didn't know. She reveals that both Saram and Young Sung are Korea's oldest gangsters, and despite numerous chances to take them down in the past, they've always slipped through the net thanks to their cozy relationships with politicians. That's where Shin Kyung Hyun comes in. Twelve years ago, he decided to play the long game, infiltrating the system from within to dismantle it. Feeling like he's said enough, Kyung Hyun switches gears back to his cop persona, grilling Yun Ha about the impending drug smuggling operation in Shenzhen. Naturally, she's in the loop, he made sure of that when he stage whispered it to Chief Cha at the party, and by planting a tracker in her swanky necklace to monitor her every move. Was he playing her? Yunha lets out a sigh and confirms she knows about the trade. This prompts Kyung Hyun to dig deeper, asking why she took a shot at No Hyunchul. The question catches the officer off guard, and she shoots a stunned look at Yunha. Kyung Hyun politely asks her to give them some privacy for his questioning, but when she hesitates, he drops the niceties and orders her out. Lieutenant Han slinks out of the room, her gaze glued to the floor cheeks flushed with embarrassment from the drama that just unfolded. She links up with Chief Cha outside, who shoots her a bewildered look. With a shrug, she admits she got the boot before sinking down next to him. They start chewing the fat about Kyung Hyun's soft spot for Yunha, and how it's starting to cloud his judgment. Han muses aloud about what a hot mess this would turn into if the higher-ups caught wind of this emotional entanglement. Mid-chat, Cha whips out his phone and hands it over to Han. The device is still in record mode, she hits play and we're transported back to the last chinwag between Sung Go Hyun Nim and Shin Kyung Hyun. After that fateful call, Chief Cha corners Shin Hyun Jian, grilling him on whether he's on the right track, and what the fallout could be if they double-cross Sung Go and Saram. As an elder, Cha freely offers his two cents, advising Kyung Hyun to hand Yunha back to Saram. But Kyung Hyun's not having any of it. He tightens his grip, his knuckles turning white at the thought. He paints a picture for Cha of what he believes went down a decade ago when Yunha was under Sungo's watch, and how he can't bear to see history repeat itself. He also spills the beans about the Nohyeongchul incident at the party, likening Yunha's expression that night to the fear-stricken face she wore ten years ago. The fact that she was willing to put her life on the line to off Nohyeongchul makes it clear she's not the scared little girl she once was. Kyung Hyun is hell-bent on not repeating his past blunders. He's determined to bring Saram down his way, the legal way, no matter who gets caught in the crossfire or how the original plan was mapped out. Fast forward to the present, and it's clear he couldn't give a hoot about what his superiors think. Lieutenant Han hands Cha back his phone, and they sit together in an awkward silence. Back at the hospital, Yoon Ha and Kyung Hyun share a comfortable quiet before he breaks the ice, commenting on the distant and haunted look in her eyes. Yunha lets out a long sigh and asks if they've met before. He doesn't respond immediately, choosing to dance around the question. Undeterred, Yunha presses him again, this time more forcefully, and also wants to know if he joined Yong Sung eight years ago. 
Hugh Hewn admits to both and fills her in on the details. He confesses that 12 years ago, he was assigned to work at Sarum, and the one who later sent him to Yong Sung was none other than Sung Go Hyunnam himself. The silence that follows is deafening. Yun had drops her gaze and stammers out a question, asking Shen why he didn't come to her rescue that fateful night. Suddenly, she starts shaking uncontrollably, haunted by the vivid memories of that horrific event. She gasps for breath and convulses in bed as if possessed, prompting Kyung Hyun to rush over and hold her down. Kyung Hyun wrestles to keep Yunha grounded as she thrashes around like a wildcat, screaming her lungs out about how much she loathes him. In swoop Chief Cha and Officer Han, all ready to lend a hand. Get a sedative. Shin barks at them, trying to pacify Yunha with soothing whispers. He makes a bold promise he'll let her deal with Sung Go Hyunchul herself. Han's taken aback and tries to argue, but Shin cuts her off, telling her to stick to her own business. Yunha's haze clears with his words, her resolve stealing. Shin pulls her close, whispering that the scumbag Sungo has been playing her for ten years, and he'll let her end his chapter. She sinks into his chest, eyes falling shut as he murmurs reassurances. With Yunha settled, the trio of officers regroup outside to plot their next move. Shin lays it out, they need to spread the rumor that Yunha met her end at his hands, to both Saram and Yong Sung. Cha raises an eyebrow, warning Shin to rethink, given the potential gang warfare it could spark. But Shin just waves him off, reminding them all to tread carefully. Han pipes up, asking if it's wise to loop in Kim Minseek, who's known to play both sides. But Shin's way ahead, revealing it's part of his master plan, to bring down both No Hyunchul and Kim Minseek. They debate what to share with their superiors, but Han finally suggests they keep them in the dark. Shin's grin says it all, he's on board. Once the others clear out, Kyung Hyun's left alone with his thoughts, which are oddly consumed by Yunha. It's a first for him, having such intense feelings for someone. He returns to her bedside, watching her sleep peacefully, a stark contrast to the storm that just passed. For Yunha, the next few days are spent trying to escape the little prison called a hospital that Shin keeps her in. This time she is already close to the door before he catches up with her, throws her above his shoulder, and carries her back to her bed. He gently places her on it and tucks her in carefully like a baby, telling her that she needs it before she damages her body by trying to run away. It's been ten days since a bullet grazed her, and yet, Shin continues to treat her as though she's just learned to walk. Even when the doctors give her a thumbs up on her speedy recovery, he isn't taking any chances. He's got her handcuffed to the bed 24-7, all thanks to her multiple escape attempts. But seriously, why does everything in her life have to circle back to him? After another day of playing jailer, Kyung Hyun wishes her a good night and heads out. But halfway down the corridor, Yunha calls out to him. She wants to have a chat. This throws Shin for a loop, but he obliges, returning to sit by her bedside. As he asks about her well-being, Yunha catches a whiff of whiskey on his breath. She requests a glass for herself, but Shin shoots her request down, considering her current state. Next, she asks him to uncuff her. He refuses, despite her promises, not to make another run for it. Their conversation turns casual, discussing her health and his life as a cop. Yunha can't help but admire his physique wondering how much effort he puts into maintaining his gangster persona. Snapping back to reality, she voices a pressing concern, will she be held captive for shooting no Hyunchul? Shin reassures her that she won't, as the incident hasn't been made public and their superiors are none the wiser. Feeling more confident, Yunha begs him again to remove the cuffs, promising to behave. When Shin asks if she'd harm Sung Go Hyungnim if he lets her go, she denies it, but secretly plans a far worse fate for him. Shin sees the anger simmering beneath her surface and chooses to keep the cuffs on, apologizing for her past traumas. Yunha's patience wears thin as her pleas fall on deaf ears. She begins to make a fuss, begging Shin to help her take down Sung Go. Shin tries to calm her down, explaining that acting impulsively could jeopardize everything they've worked towards. But his words fall on deaf ears as Yunha vents her pent-up rage, accusing him of incompetence. Despite her fury, Shin remains calm, sympathizing with her plight and assuring her they're on the same side. 
But Yunha snaps back, arguing that while they might lead similar lives, she was forced into hers, while he chose his. Amidst her tantrum, Kyung Hyun manages to hold her down, promising to help her get the revenge she so desperately seeks. When Yunha finally comes to her senses, well, at least that's what it looks like, she interrogates Kyung Hyun on a few things about their past, questioning if he had a hand in her parents' passing that night. Kyung Hyun explains that he didn't know Sung Go Hyung Nim would hit her father that night, that he only trailed him because he suspected he would do something out of the ordinary and he was right. Sung Go's plan that night was to end Mr. Lee and become the head of Serum then finish off everyone whom he took with him at the time and put the blame on Young Sung probably wanting to add more fuel to the fire, or trying to see how good of a guy he is, Yunha asks him what he would have done if Sungo ordered him to assassinate her parents that night and his reply was simple, he would have sneaked the news to her father and tried to bring the organization down because it was his job as a police officer. To prove that his promises aren't fake, he tells her that on the day of the party, he slaughtered 15 members of the Young Sung gang, including the thug who shot her so he could save her. A simple declaration from a hot man is a powerful thing because it changes Yuna's whole demeanor. Catching Shen completely off guard, she makes advances toward him, offering it as her way of thanking him for saving her life. As they get caught up in their emotions, Kyung Hyun makes another declaration yet again. He informs Yunha that until she takes her last breath, she is not to let any other man lay a finger on her body. No other man. Just him. After everything, they both smuggle into bed with Kyung Hyun, taking more than half of the space. Feeling cheated, Yun Ha decides to go find another bed space to rest, but Kyung Hyun has other plans. He pulls her back so she can lie on his body and tells her to stay put. She tries to jump out of bed, but he takes the other half of the handcuff and clips it to his hand, binding them together. Later on, Yunha catches herself seriously in thoughts about her relationship with Kyung Hyun and how deep she has gotten. They both air their opinions about their intimate life and how addicted they are becoming to each other, so he promises not to touch her until she has fully recovered. Seeing how well they are conversing, Yunha decides to take the opportunity to make her usual request of taking the handcuff away. Shin, however, refuses to accept this, saying she would try to run away again and he doesn't want that since she is now an enemy to Yong Sung. Letting her free would put both of them in serious trouble. Hearing this, Yunha feels a fong of fear and asks Kyung Hyun if Sung Go knows that she is still alive. He answers yes to her question, but tells her that he wouldn't let her go back to Sarum because it would be too dangerous. Nonetheless, she tells him of the chance she will get to avenge her parents if she goes back, but Kyung Hyun vows to bring Sungo to her instead. After they discuss that, Shin begins to confess his feelings to her, telling her that everything he does is because he loves her. Hearing this, Yuna's face turns bright red, and she starts to panic, but Kyung Hyun isn't done yet. He tells her that he had never wanted to keep a girl by his side, right until now. With his hand on her face, he pulls her in, and he asks her if she feels the same. In the next scene, Yunha is still frozen by words she had just heard, she begins to refer to Shin Kyung Hyun as the president. She tells him that she doesn't feel for him in that kind of way, and just like that, the tone of their conversion changes. Kyung Hyun picks her up and begs that they get intimate one last time, but Yunha refuses until she doesn't. Daybreak arrives, and Yunha rolls out of bed, realizing she's not entirely alone. Shin has vanished, but in his place is Chief Cha, engrossed in his iPad from a safe distance. She lets out a sleepy yawn, brushing off the remnants of last night's dream and greets Cha with a cheeky proposition for a shared shower. His reaction is a cocktail of mild shock and weariness, but he doesn't take the bait. Even when she tries to ruffle his feathers by flirting, he ensures her handcuffs stay put, even in the bathroom. Feeling defeated, she shrugs off her dress and steps into the shower. But as the water hits her skin, a figure materializes before her. It's Shin, emerging from the shadows, urging her to carry on. He slips behind her, surprising her with an unexpected kiss. As they share the intimate moment, Yunha gets a clearer view of the tattoo adorning his back. Curiosity peaked, she asks about its origin. Shin reveals it was inked when he graduated from police academy and was assigned to infiltrate the gang. It was a necessary disguise to blend in with the underworld. 
As Shin shares his story, a question bubbles up in Yuna's mind. Once he's finished, she launches it at him, inquiring if he knew about her father when he started working in Serum. Shin responds honestly, he wasn't in the position to cross paths with her father, so he had no knowledge. Later, in the comfort of their room, as Shin attempts to tame her hair, Yunha delves into her past. She talks about her naivety, unable to fathom her father's involvement with the Serum gang. Shin paints a different picture of Mr. Lee a man who cared for his employees and dreamed of a quiet life away from Seoul with his family. Yunha remembers those conversations, her father's dream of a peaceful life outside the bustling city. But back then, she was too young and rebellious to truly understand. The conversation takes a turn towards Shin's background. For a moment, they feel like any other couple sharing stories about their past. Shin opens up about his family, a lineage of brothers, and a father in the police force. His mother passed away when he was just seven, and his work keeps him from maintaining close ties with his family. He shares a fear that occasionally haunts him, losing himself in the gangster persona he's been portraying for years. He worries that one day, his real identity might just fade away. After some minutes, Kyung Hyun decides to have one of those deep conversations again. He asks her what she does whenever she feels disappointed, and she tells him that she usually spends her time at the cinema, watching movies, because it makes her escape reality, and it makes her happy. Eager to make everything done her way, Kyung Hyun asks her out on a movie date, but she declines because she knows for a fact that he will become bored of her in the end. However, Kyung Hyun tries to make her see how hard he has fallen for her and the lengths he is willing to go just to see that she is happy. Locking lips with her, he promises to avenge her parents and also begs that she wait for him to complete his mission and return to her. Shin Kyung Hyun is back at the grind, looking sharp in his sleek black suit. As the elevator dings open, a pair of burly goons stride in, their intentions as clear as the weapons they're wielding. Shin, ever the strategist, flips the script by using their own weapon against them. One swift move and one thug is down, a knife lodged in his chest. It's clear as day that Sungo Hyungnim sent these brutes after Yunha. Shin can practically taste the danger in the air. Meanwhile, Yunha is still playing prisoner back at the hospital, this time with Lieutenant Han as her jailer. Yunha flashes one of her signature grins at Han, inviting her over for a little chit-chat. Han declines at first, but eventually gives in, ready to field any questions Yunha might throw her way. The first question out of Yunha's mouth is about her release, but Han plays it close to the vest, citing confidentiality. Not one to be easily deterred, Yunha pushes, asking when Shin will be off work. At this, Han relents a little and reveals that Yunha will be released when the leaders of Serum and Yongsung are arrested in Shenzhen. Yunha, however, has other plans. She spills her initial plan of pinning the drug smuggling case on Sungo Hyungnim and pleads with Han to persuade Shin to let her continue her mission. Han looks at her like she's lost her marbles, dismissing her idea outright. She insists that returning to Serum would be nothing short of self-sabotage. Undeterred, Yunha spills some tea about her history with Sungo, emphasizing his obsession with her. Han listens attentively, so much so that she doesn't notice Yunha's newly acquired firearm. Shin bursts into the room, just as Han makes a hasty exit. Before he can even question what happened, Yunha points Han's stolen gun at him. She threatens to shoot if he comes any closer, and when he steps forward, she holds the gun against her own neck, clearly enjoying Shin's evident discomfort. She then invites him to sit down for a chat, but not before insisting he disarm himself. Over drinks, she lays out her plan to return to Serum and reconnect with Sungo. She reassures him that their initial plan doesn't have to change, she'll simply lead Sungo to Shenzhen, where the police can swoop in. She even manages to add a promise of keeping him alive until the police arrive. Shin, amused yet frustrated, asks about her endgame. Her answer is simple. Revenge, seeing Sungo betrayed and defeated would be far more satisfying than just hearing about it. She wants to orchestrate his downfall her way, and nothing will stop her. With a few words and a few touches, Shin nods to her every request. He lets her have her way and says nothing about it. After they are done with chit-chatting, Yunha kisses him on the lips, and they get intimate. 
In between, Shin tells her that he will fix a GPS on her when she finally leaves to join Sarum again to determine where she is and she obliges with that. In the next scene, we see Yunha right at the feet of Sungo, begging for mercy, to be taken back. Sungo looks down at her in disdain. It takes all of his willpower not to throw her out as a corpse, she tries her best to explain everything to him, telling him nothing but the truth. This was what she had discussed with the team at their round table, to tell Sungo the whole thing and watch as he let her go alive. She promised them that she knew the pig like the back of her hand and she wasn't wrong. Sungo, being smart, pulls out a knife and asks if she returned to take his head and deliver it to Kyung Hyun, but she declines every fact he makes and gives a pitiful show of how she waited for him to come and save her but he didn't. Yunha kneels beside him, pleading to be taken back by the clan. She proves she is still useful by giving him new information about smuggling in Shenzhen and all the big gangs Yong Sung has partnered with. As Sungo looks down at her, his features begin to soften and just like that, all his hatred vanishes. And just like that, he picks her up from the ground and carries her in his arms, pouring out words of praise and forgiveness. As he takes her into his arms, he declares a party to honor her arrival. Meanwhile, Kyung Hyun is worried sick about Yunha and how far she has gone with her plans. He calls Chief Cha to rearrange some documents and speed up Shenzhen's transaction process so Yunha can return to him faster. On hearing this, Cha explains the consequences of doing such a risky thing, but Shin clears it up and stands his ground. He wants Yunha by his side, and the faster he can get her, the better. Post Yunha, Kyung Hyun's world is a whole lot of nothing. He's practically a walking zombie, going through the motions, but not really living. When Chief Cha waltzes in with the latest update on Shenzhen, Shin couldn't care less. Cha tries to show some concern, but Shin just shrugs it off and sends him packing. Cut to Yuna's welcome back, Shindig. She's downing drinks like there's no tomorrow, doing her best to hide her revulsion. It's barely been a day, and Sungo is already revealing his true colors. Drunk as a skunk, he stumbles over, trying to grill her for intel on Shin Kyung Hyun. Yunha plays along, pouring him another drink and spilling some harmless secrets, carefully avoiding anything that could blow her cover. But Sungo isn't letting up. He hits her with a zinger, why didn't she off Shin when she had the chance? Yunha deftly dodges the question, claiming if she had, she wouldn't have been able to bring him the juicy details about Shin Jen. Sungo, gullible as ever, eats it up. Armed with Yunha's tidbits, Sungo decides to head to Shenzhen himself. Yunha can't help but smirk at how perfectly Shin's prediction played out. But she's got her own little secret, she's tagging along. She breaks the news to Sungo, adding that she plans to hit up a popular gangster hangout to gather more dirt on Yong Sung. Sungo, ever the smitten kitten, laps up her plan and showers her with praises. As they wrap up their chat, Yunha drops her final ask. Sungo, ever the gentleman, assures her that her wish is his command. So, she tells him what she wants. Just him. Next up, we're introduced to a blonde-haired heartthrob who looks like he's walked straight out of a magazine cover. As he steps into Kyung Hyun's office, the mood shifts. Kyung Hyun instantly looks worn out, knowing that this guy spells trouble. The newcomer, his eyes wide with awe, can't stop gushing about the room's size. He plops down across from Kyung Hyun and asks for a smoke, but Kyung Hyun turns him down, reminding him that his office is a no-smoking zone. The guy then starts spilling the latest gossip about Shin, asking if he really did eliminate the female spy. He confirms it. Turns out, the guy is Chairman Im Sung Joon, a key player in Young Sung and soon to be part of their Shenzhen gig. Song Jun questions Kyung Hyun's decision to move the transaction date up. Kyung Hyun's response is straightforward, better to move the drug sooner than risk getting caught. Song Jun cautions him about damaging his credibility, but Kyung Hyun isn't budging. His clients have been loyal for years, so he's confident they'll roll with the punches. Song Jun is still prowling on about the Shenzhen deal, trying to convince Shin to stick with the original date. Shin's patience is running thin, why should he have to debate with a nincompoop like Song Jun? He's made his call, and that's that. 
Just as the tension in the room is reaching its peak, Chief Cha makes an entrance, whispering something in Shin's ear. This little interruption ticks off Song Jun. He leaps up, gunning for Cha, but Shin's quicker. He steps between the two men, shoving Song Jun to the floor. Without missing a beat, he drags Song Jun across the room, slamming him against the glass door. His threat is crystal clear, mess up again, and you're going over the edge. Once he's sure Song Jun's got the message, he lets him go, promising a less forgiving response next time. Ever the diplomat, he has Cha escort them out. Alone again, Shin can't shake off what Cha told him, Yuna's GPS isn't showing any movement. He dials her number over and over until she finally picks up. She explains that she removed the chip because she's about to travel. Knowing how worried he must be, she reassures him that she's not planning on disappearing. She reiterates her plan and gives him the address of a bar in China, Egoist, where they'll meet to hash things out. Shin's mind is whirling. Why would she change everything at the last minute? He starts brainstorming, calling Cha over to share his plans. First, he needs to get to China ASAP, so Cha should book a flight while Lieutenant Han keeps an eye on things back home. Second, they need to keep tabs on No Hyungchul, Mayor Kim, and Sungo Hyungnim, especially Sungo. Lastly, their superiors must be kept in the dark, things might get messy. Fast forward 18 hours, and Yun has at Egoist, scanning the crowd for Shin. She's all dolled up in a traditional Chinese outfit, but she's having trouble reaching him on her phone. The bar is filled with unfamiliar faces, and the stench of smoke and drugs is overpowering. As she tries to escape the smell, a man catches her eye. She heads towards him, hoping he's Shin, but she's stopped in her tracks when she bumps into someone. She mumbles an apology and tries to move past him, but he blocks her path, grinning like a Cheshire cat. Yunha does her best to avoid him, but he grabs her and shoves her against the wall. She's had enough. With a swift motion, she pulls out her hairpin and jabs it into his face, giving her just enough time to slip away. Crouched in her hiding spot, Yunha's mind is racing. The guy she'd just run into? The owner of Egoist. Now that she knows this, she's sure of one thing, she's not where she's supposed to be. If he finds out who she really is, her cover is blown. Just as she's contemplating her next move, Shin Kyung Hyun strolls in, looking focused and flanked by the very man she'd just evaded. Shin and the egoist owner, known as Rigawi, seem to have an old camaraderie, probably born from their deep understanding of the drug underworld. As they chat, Shin's mind is buzzing with plans, making mental bookmarks for when he can come back and clean up this place. However, for now, he's playing the part of a friend and a gangster. When Rigawi gestures to one of his minions, who returns with a suitcase full of drugs, Shin accepts it graciously, keeping up appearances. Afterward, he excuses himself, stepping outside to get some fresh air and locate Yunha. Meanwhile, Yunha has finally emerged from her hideout, trying to figure out how to slip away unnoticed. Her heart is pounding as she navigates the nearly empty space, all too aware of the potential trap she could be walking into. But she doesn't notice the man trailing behind her until he suddenly grabs her, dragging her away from the hall. She struggles, but he holds her tight. When they're finally alone, she looks up to see the man she's been waiting for, Shin. Her breath catches in her throat, words failing her. When she finally manages to speak, she tells him how terrified she was. His response? He silences her with a kiss. Then, he slumps against her, holding her tightly, regret etched on his face. She reassures him, explaining that it was her choice to seek revenge on her terms. Shin is overwhelmed by his concern for her, admitting that he had to fight through a crowd of men to reach her. He confesses how much he cares about her and the lengths he'd go to ensure her happiness. But their moment is short-lived. Outside, danger is looming. Young Pal is desperately trying to reach Yunha, but she's not picking up. Nonetheless, he leaves a voicemail, warning her that Sungo will be at Egoist tonight. The game is far from over. Next, we find Yunha enjoying a casual outing with Kyung Hyun. She's relishing her meal and playfully encourages Kyung Hyun to eat more, she believes he's been shedding weight due to the mounting stress. He indulges her, 
tasting a bit of her burger, but his real delight is simply watching her enjoy her food. As they converse, Hyun Hyun delves into his familiar narrative about his profound love for her. She listens attentively, yet harbors a sense that something feels slightly amiss. Teasingly, she inquires if he's been consuming any hard drugs. To her astonishment, he admits that he has it's a necessity to keep himself awake for the imminent 39 hours. The discussion takes a turn from culinary delights to strategic planning. Hyun Hyun inquires about Sungo's location, curious if Yunha has maintained contact. He encourages her to reveal her plans so he can assist where needed. She does, disclosing her intention to steal the goods during Sungo's trade with Yong Sung, followed by a swift escape to the closest safe house. She hesitates, and Kyung Hyun steps in to complete the picture, making the entire plan sound effortlessly straightforward. She'll snatch the goods, Sungo will reach out to him, he'll arrive with the police, discreetly arrest Sungo, and allow Yunha the final say by pulling the trigger. Sounds like a walk in the park, doesn't it? Post-dinner, Yunha and Kyung Hyun set out, seeking a taxi to transport them to their temporary lodging. During their walk, Kyung Hyun attempts to connect with his team back in Korea via his mobile phone, but to no avail. He eventually gives up, opting instead to stand by the roadside to hail a taxi. Almost as if summoned, a car pulls over. Being the perfect gentleman, Kyung Hyun opens the car door for Yunha and then takes a moment to answer a call from Lieutenant Han. However, when the car door swings open again, it reveals an unwelcome surprise, three men, one of them being the troublesome director Song Joon, his blonde hair reflecting the light. Sensing the imminent threat, Kyung Hyun instructs Yunha to flee. She needs no further prompting, sprinting away, while Kyung Hyun grapples with the adversaries. As she runs, she realizes she cannot simply desert him. Swiftly devising a plan, she commandeers a bus, drives it towards the ensuing battle, and beckons Kyung Hyun to climb aboard. But her sudden reappearance catches him off guard. Before he can react, Im seizes her, pressing a knife against her throat. Yunha does her best to keep her cool, repeating a mantra in her head, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to get out of this alive. Is she convinced? Maybe. But the repetition helps. She's also keeping track of her captors, five in total, and trying to figure out where she might be. It smells like oil and machinery, she's guessing a factory. While she's plotting her escape, a group of men hauls in Kyung Hyun and dumps him next to her. A bit of a squabble breaks out among the men, giving Yunha some valuable intel about their upcoming drug deal. Once the dust settles, Director Song Jun steps forward, introducing himself to Yunha, who hasn't stopped hurling insults at him. She continues to ruffle his feathers until Kyung Hyun intervenes, telling him to knock it off. Recognizing Kyung Hyun as the top dog, Song Jun tosses the ball back in his court. Kyung Hyun pleads for Yunha's release, promising to do whatever it takes. Song Jun simply laughs, reminding him that Yunha is supposedly the same girl who shot their president. He also questions why she's still alive when he'd claimed to have killed her. Kyung Hyun doesn't respond, he's too busy mentally plotting his next move against Song Joon. Little does he know, Song Joon is one step ahead, and the blow to Kyung Hyun's head leaves him unconscious before he can even react. Song Joon invites the Chinese kingpin, Rigui, to enjoy the spectacle. With a language barrier between them Rigui speaks only English, while Song Joon understands Chinese, they resort to using an interpreter. They discuss the money for the trade, but when Rigui questions the absence of the funds, Song Jun explains they'll arrive the next day. Rigui decides to take matters into his own hands, planning to get rid of Kyung Hyun, who's no longer useful. As he aims his gun, Yunha pleads with him in English. She tells Rigui that Kyung Hyun was planning to steal the goods and return them to him. She even confesses to shooting the president of Yong Sung, Nel Hyunchul, to prevent them from getting the drugs. Rigui is impressed and agrees to trade with Yunha on one condition, Kyung Hyun must be spared. However, he quickly turns the tables, pointing his gun at Yunha and threatening to kill her. It's Kyung Hyun's turn to beg for Yunha's life, but before he can finish, he's attacked by the men, beaten and tortured. Rigui orders his men to prepare a drug for Yunha, a substance that will make her want to die, a supposedly painless exit. 
Yunha fights back, struggling against her captors, but they're too strong. As they pin her down, waiting for the perfect moment to strike, Rigawi leaves, tossing Yunha the hairpin she'd used to threaten him during their last encounter as a twisted parting gift. Still holed up in the chilly confines of that fertilizer factory, it feels like the night's dragging its feet. Yunha and Kyung Hyun are shuffled off to a different part of the factory while Rigawi and Song Jun keep talking shop. Rigawi lays down the law, he's not one to mess with his schedule, and gives Song Jun a two-hour window to rustle up the cash for the drug trade. He throws in another curveball, for safety's sake, nobody's leaving the factory until the deal's done and dusted. Song Jun feels like he's about to lose it and calls Rigawi's bluff, but when he's met with a steely gaze, he knows this ain't a joke. Defeated, he signals his right-hand man, Young G.I., to hand over his mobile phone. Next scene, Kyung Hyun's pulling out all the stops trying to snap Yunha back to reality from the drug-induced hallucinations. She's writhing on the ground, yelling for help, begging Kyung Hyun not to hurt her. She curls up, terrified, pleading with her parents to come to her rescue. Kyung Hyun looks deep into her eyes, the empty stare tells him everything. The drug's working fast, and he needs to ground her, fast. He reassures her that it's all just make-believe, holding her close, kissing her, trying to anchor her to reality. He promises her it's just a bad dream and she just needs to wake up and everything will be fine. But she's still trapped in her mind, crying, fighting to hold on to the shreds of her sanity. It's like the drug dredged up every painful memory and made it fresh in her mind. Now, she can only hear the negative voices in her head. Her words are scaring Kyung Hyun and it's hard for him to watch her in so much pain. Knowing Yun has barely hanging on, he pleads with her to come back to him. That's all he can do right now, beg like a man out of options. As he recalls their shared memories, he realizes how much she means to him, how much he needs her in his life. The thought of losing her breaks him and he starts to cry. Seeing his tears, something shifts in Yunha. Her face softens, her eyes lose their vacant look. She goes up to him, assuring him that everything will be okay, wrapping him in a comforting hug. They cling to each other, holding on as tight as they can, hoping to wake up from this nightmare soon. This is where this manhwa ends for now. Let me know if you enjoyed it. In the meantime, do check out the channel for other amazing recaps. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, ciao.